Oh, there we go. It should be. Oh, is it on? I think we're live. Let's see. We're good. Welcome to the nope. Vine Live, everyone. Is it on? Is it on? It's on. We're good. Woo! Uh, <laughs> welcome to the Vine Live. I may have already said that, but uh, I'm going to say it again. So, welcome, everyone. So glad you're with us tonight. Um, the Vine Live, we take uh, 25 minutes and we go through, we talk about life, uh, practical tips, um, what's happening in society, some books, and we pray for each other. So um, tonight we're going to be talking about Psalm 150, and we just finished a series. Um, but let me introduce who's with us tonight. We have Debron Hazelwood, our family pastor at Foothill Vineyard Church. So grateful that she's part of our team here. And uh, Rick Iacobo is with us. He's going to MC this thing and keep us on track. Yep. So Rick, take it away. All right. Well, uh, as, uh, as before, we'd like you to chime in. Uh, if you're watching, go ahead and throw up a question if you want. Um, it doesn't have to be specifically about uh, Psalms 150. It could be any theological question you have. We will try to hit it tonight. Um, but of course, if you have questions on the sermon, if you want to add something, please feel free to jump in. This is a community event. And so we don't want to be the only ones talking. We want to hear uh, from you as well. So um, with that said, let's get into it. Uh, we have a meme of the week somewhere. Let's see it. Okay, let me hop over and get my uh, screen shared. Okay. <laughs> I'm laughing in advance. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. Okay, Zoom needs a button that plays wrap it up music like at the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> am I right or am I right? That no. is so true. <laughs> yes, very much so. Like we oh, have all be been in those Zooms now by this point where you're like, oh my gosh, they just keep going. <laughs> yeah, too long. I, I just it. want to say thanks to Ben for sending that out to us. That's right. Yeah, Thank right. <laughs> oh yeah. That brings me joy. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Zoom is, uh, it seems like it's the way of life right now, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so we've got the meme done. So what's going on with the community right now? Obviously, we've got fires and stuff, but do we have something maybe uplifting we want to talk about? Or well, we and with, since we mentioned the fires in the past, like um, this bobcat fire, it's burned a crazy amount. But the best thing that's kind of um, that's happened over the last week or so is that it has moved away from um the house in monrovia and so they're not um in danger of of um having to leave and uh and so anyway the fire is more contained on this side of san gabriel's which is amazing um i know it's transferred up north uh, which is scary for the towns on the other side of san gabriel's but on this side um things are are safer so that's a, a great thing especially one of our families, uh, they had their cars packed and they were ready to go, the Ramirez family. And so it's so good that, that they're kind of out of the danger zone at this point. So uh, I just want to give that update. But then on a kind of a crazy note and fun note, it's sad, but it's also just so sweet. And so um, I like good, happy news. And so here is a guy, uh, his name is Tony Williams. And I'm going to show you his picture. Um, this is a widower who was lonely. He lives, um, overseas over in England and he put up a poster asking for friends. And all of a sudden he had, um, all these people that message him, wrote him letters, tried to connect with him. And this is what he wrote. He wrote this and he put it up on a poster outside of his house where he lived. He said, I have lost Joe my lovely wife and soulmate. I have no friends or family, no one to talk to. Mm. I find the unremitting silence 24 hours a day, unbearable torture. Can no one help me? And so this is him. And that's the uh, poster that he put up. Okay. Oh, and mm. I think what I love about this story is that literally hundreds of thousands of people well, hundreds and hundreds and ultimately a couple thousand people have befriended him and saying let's talk let's hang out let's be together let's be community for one another and and i love that idea of people being there for each other it's really what the church should be all about and so 
Um, mm. I just find my heart warmed when I read a story like that. A guy that's really in a lot of pain and people are there. People stand yeah. up. I love that. Go Tony. Isn't that good? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And great. I love that he was willing to actually speak out and say, Hey, I'm in pain. Cause a lot of times we just hide our pain and, Mm -hmm. um, and so he's able to share that and people were able to respond. So yeah, he asked for help. How hard that must have been so hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's very humbling. Right. I love him. Wow. Debron, do you have anything? A good, good, some good news. Um, I didn't prepare for that. <laughs> oh. We talked about it ahead of time. I put you on the spot. We did? No, no, no. I was just saying we talked about oh. But you didn't have anything and i had it all so. oh uh, the local high school gets to start all their um yeah. athletics practice like so that's exciting for the kids you know that yay all the sports teams i mean they have to do it kind of different you know at first but super exciting that football gets to come back and water polo and you know all that stuff so i think that's yeah. fun that's great that's awesome <laughs> good stuff okay so on Sunday, you, John, you talked about Psalm 150. Yep. And praise seemed to be kind of the main theme there. So yeah. um, let's go ahead and move into giving us maybe like a, an overview of that guy. Um, but I just want to take a moment. Um, if you guys are online and you have anything to add uh, that you liked about the sermon or you had questions on, please go ahead and throw it in there and we will hit them as they go. All right, go ahead, John. So we tackled Psalm 150, and the reason why we tackled this one is because this is the end of that series on praying the Psalms. And so what we've been talking about is if you want to learn to pray, if you want to deepen your prayer life, read and pray the Psalms. And so the Psalms give us all this space to connect and talk to God. And um, they're, they're absolutely, they're this space where the, all the highs and lows of life are represented in these 150 Psalms. And the interesting thing is the Psalms are split into five different books, or today we might use the word chapters. And at the, each one of those chap, at the end of each of those chapters throughout these 150 Psalms, each one ends with praise. Um, and most of them are just like a one liner or two lines, yeah. but it just so happens that the fifth book and the final chapter is one big book of praise. And so um, it's a short, a short Psalm. There's only six verses here. Um, but let me read you, um, this is Psalm 150, uh, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him for his mighty, in his mighty heavens, praise him for his acts of power, praise him for his surprise, surpassing greatness, praise him with the sounding of a trumpet, praise him with the harp and lyre, praise him with the ram's horn and dancing, praise him with strings and pipe, praise him with the clashing of cymbals, praise him with the resounding cymbals, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And I love this psalm because it's like the perfect ending to these 150 psalms. And I, I don't know if you heard it, but over and over again, the psalmist is saying, praise the Lord. He says it 13 times in these six verses. Each, each sentence here is an imperative. And that's like, it's like a command. It forces us to say, we're going to praise God no matter what is happening. And if you look at the totality of all the psalms, you see the, all the, like I said, the highs and lows of life. And at the end, no matter if it was high or low, and we talked about this on Sunday, like 60% of the Psalms are lament, woe, disorientation. And still there's praise at the end of each chapter, each book. And so, um, and so this imperative is not praise and worship God if you feel inclined to do so. It is no praise and worship God and do it now. And, right. um, and there's something really important about that when the church is able to do that, even in the middle of life's difficulty, it's awesome. And so it, to me on Sunday, we talked about it being kind of like, uh, like this Psalms, like a cheerleader. Um, and even though the team's not doing great, but that, that some good cheerleaders can get the audience involved and stand up and cheer anyway. It doesn't matter how good or how poor or how amazing it's going. A good cheerleader can get everybody to stand and cheer and shout. And that's what this psalmist is doing 
uh, even in the middle of, you could say, our COVID and our earthquake here that we had, which is a decent earthquake. It woke a lot of people up. It woke up my daughter, Haven. She couldn't go to sleep for three hours after this thing hit. It just hit right before uh, this last week, right before midnight. Um, and then all of our fires and all the all the craziness of this last, you know, eight months now. So, right. so that's what we talked about on Sunday, um, this idea of praising God in the middle of it all um, right. and just going for it. So, so you talked about um, a heart of worship in, yeah. in your, when you talked here. And so is there a story? Um, I can think of one in your life, John, uh, when you were transitioning from Baton Rouge to um, San Dimas San and uh, you had your house there and you had to sell it and you couldn't get another house until that was sold. And what did, what did that look like for you with it, it through the lens of looking through a heart of worship? Yeah, that's great. So in the middle of that season, I would say I was like the psalmist, right? Like I was like these psalms where there was highs and lows. Um, one of the low points, like you're saying, is that we couldn't sell our house in Baton Rouge for anything. Like we couldn't get, we couldn't unload this thing. And it was a beautiful house, but we just couldn't sell it, which meant we couldn't get into something over here in San Dimas area. And so what it looked like was worshiping God, even though we were in an RV trailer um, for like four and a half months, um, not in our own space. Actually, it was a total of six and a half months before we actually were, were in our own, own space, you know, and, and even that was a miracle. But, but it was really my heart had to make a choice to praise and worship God in the middle of feeling like, God, are, are you, it's been this long already. Um, yeah. and so it would have been easy for my wife and I to live in an RV, right. But it was five kids plus Kate and I, you know? <laughs> um, so anyway, that, that's a good example for sure. I'm praising God for that. And Debron, you had one, a couple kind of towards the beginning of the year, you talked about it. What was that one? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, mine was kind of, I was just talking about going through a season. Um, and I mean, that, happens for all of us right like where there's just really really hard seasons but I, I was in this one particular season and I had lost a friend she had passed away unexpectedly and then another friend was really sick um and I was just feeling super worn out and um and weary of all of that you know just like oh my god like my heart was hurting for these 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 families that were losing their loved ones and for myself losing my friends and um and I was feeling kind of angry and, and grumpy about the whole thing, you know, and just like mad at God, like these were good people and their families needed them. And what, it, what are you doing? You know? And there's this song by Ren Collective called Weep With Me. And it came on the radio and I'd heard it a million times, but sometimes a song will come on in just the right moment, you know, and, and God just uses it to speak to you. And he really used that song to speak to me. And I kind of, told me like, Hey, we're going to go through this season where I'm going to teach you how to praise me through the mess and the ugly. And what it's done for me in my life is really, um, helped me to realize like that God can you, like when we praise God, when things are messy and ugly and really hard, um, we create a space for him to love us in a way that, that is just unreal. Like you can't experience it when life is just lovely and fabulous, you know, like you can only experience this type of love from God when you're um, just broken and leaning on him and there's, there's nowhere else to go, you know? Um, so that, that's just kind of that story about how God has taught me how to praise him. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That heart of worship, that whole idea of instead of focusing on the problem or the, or the situation you're in, instead changing your focus to God. And I think, you know, we see that throughout the Bible, like, Paul's in prison and he's sitting there singing, you know, um, that's a, if you just want a Bible story about it. So um, it, that's what we're called to do, you know, and, and it's not easy. Um, it's very difficult to put aside everything that's going on, the, the waves and the wind and look up towards God instead. But that's when we do that and we show that our focus is on him, that's where the, you know, that turnaround happens in our hearts and our perspective changes um, and those things happen. So it's, it's great to, to hear those stories um, from the both of you. Um, so we had some practical tips. I actually called it the right name because I wrote it down. Good job, Rick. So <laughs> takeaway points. Practical tips. Practical. Um, there's three of them. The, the third one was heart of worship. 
So we kind of hit that one. We can we can brush over that at the end. But what were the first two? Okay, so practical tips. Number one, think about and make a list of God's mighty works in your life and history and let that lead you into praise and worship. So for this one, Debron, this is what the psalmist did. Um, this idea of like remembering all of God's goodness. And it talks about that in verse two of Psalm 150. And so I, sometimes we just have to remember. Sometimes we forget to remember God's faithfulness and goodness over our lives. So make a list of God's wonderful works in your own life, whether it be salvation, deliverance, yeah. your freedom, and use that as a way, let that lead your heart into worship God, worshiping of God, even when there's really difficult stuff happening around you. I love that because you can get really like blinders on with like tunnel vision. I can only see what's happening right this minute and we can forget, you know, who God is and how, who he's been in our life. So I love that. Um, okay. Number two, how does your personal worship experience and practice match up with Psalm 150 verses three through five? As you read these verses, what kind of scene do you imagine worship God like that? So I want to encourage everyone out there to think of worship. So a lot of times we don't even think about worship until we get to like Sunday morning church. Okay. Ooh. So what if you put a CD in, okay. Or, or on <laughs> Spotify. <laughs> I know. They don't put make on Spotify. <laughs> I know. I know. It, I'm giving away my age. Like, okay. So, um, there was a whole season of my life where life was really difficult. Um, this is like, uh, after my undergrad was done, I went to this small little Bible school in Florida and there was like six months of really hard transitional weird life type stuff, grieving the loss of my father's when he passed away, all that type of stuff. And in the middle of that, I had this CD. Okay. This, so this is like 25 years ago, guys. Um, okay. and I put this CD, it was called hungry and it was a vineyard worship CD from the UK. And um, I just listened to that over and over, like, but here's what it did. It opened up a space for me to worship God um, and just be real with God. And just, there's something that our heart delights when you, even in your pain, worship God. So I want to encourage you guys to do that, like go for that and go for it in a way that's just over the top wild. So I think sometimes Sunday morning, we're like, oh, there's all these other people here and we're a little more reserved. And we might raise our hand or we might do something, but um, the, Psalm 150, it talks about like the ram's horn and a tambourine mm -hmm. and all this other like wild, crazy dancing. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes we just need to go for it on, you know, like shut the door, go in the woods, go somewhere and <laughs> just dance up a storm and just have fun and yeah. just say, God, be with me. I just, I love you so much and just sing a song to the Lord. So Sometimes we just have to go all in and that's kind of what the psalmist is talking about. They, uh, on Sunday, we talked about when a uh, ram's horn is blown. It's like, it's not like a pretty sound. It's, it's, it's pretty obnoxious. And um, sometimes it's okay for us just to go and have fun with something like that instead of it being all pretty and, and perfect. So yeah, I think you should just go for it. So go find a space doesn't matter where it is. It could be a bedroom of your house. It could be the garage or go for a walk out in the woods and just worship and let your whole body, um, let your whole, like your physical body just enter in and mm -hmm. just have fun. Love it. Love it. Hey, so we have some Facebook comments. Ooh. We want to maybe do those before we go to the next part. Um, sure. Well, practical tip number three. I got it right again. I just wanted to say that we should mark it down somewhere. <laughs> Um, we have a comment from uh, Tess Benson that said, when you were talking about going in the woods and praising and just kind of letting go, um, she'd said, especially in your pain, um, mm. to do that, you know, it's, it's go out and do it, you know? Um, yeah. And sometimes like in your pain to do that, it like God will meet you when you go there in that type of uh, space. So when we take our pain with us and we're like honest and real and authentic with God, that's a powerful moment for the Holy Spirit to be active in our lives in a brand new way. So uh, yeah. go Tesco. Yeah. 
And then uh, Jenna said one, um, she said, I love the idea of our hearts needing to make the choice to praise him amidst the hard seasons. Um, she, for her, she's finding that as she seeks to make him my first thoughts and praise him for a beautiful new day. Um, and she referenced uh, Anchor by Skillet as the go-to song for that. I don't, I don't know, Sweet. I haven't heard that one before, but, or maybe I have and just don't know the name of it. Janet, it's great. Like play it loud and sing along and just go for it. That's right, that's good. That's good stuff. That you know that song, LeBron? I don't know. I might if I heard it. I'm gonna have to look it up for sure. Okay. I mean, I did listen to Skillet quite a bit. <laughs> That's like old I school. Know I know. <laughs> Here's in high yeah. school. Oh, okay. <laughs> so fun. Uh, I didn't know Skillet I, was a band. <laughs> I just want to say, maybe thinking go th throwback a long time. So when I was in high school, it was Petra Praise. Oh yeah. <laughs> and um, it was like the this worship rock music that was amazing. It was super, super great. So I love that. I saw that Petra Praise. They oh, had yeah, really? uh, the Newsboys open for them. So this is in the 90s, you know, but Petra was awesome. Yeah, Newsboys were like a no-name <laughs> band then. They were just fledgling. <laughs> So, we just lost like half of the crowd. Like, people are like, who are these yeah. bands? What are you talking like, about? Who? It's just what? got corny. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, We're sorry, so, everyone. Really quick, I wanted to mention on the, I know we like did practical tip number three earlier because it was the, yeah, the sure. heart of worship, but John had mentioned like, you know, using a, a Spotify playlist or Pandora list or YouTube list or whatever. And I loved that idea because there are so many Spotify lists. And so I just wanted to throw that out there. If you go on Spotify, Vineyard Worship, which there's a billion, there's Hillsong and I mean, you can make your own and there's a billion, but Vineyard Worship has a couple that are like, even like for different kind of moods of worship. So like worshiping through lament, like they've got one for that. They've got, you know, like a kid's one. It's really fun, by the way, you know, like a vineyard kids worship. And so anyway, just throwing that out there, like I download them and save them to my phone. And then, I mean, when you're in that space, like perfect. So and you don't even need a CD. You don't yes. even need a CD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. um, you can also with Spotify, I know you can follow one of your friends playlists. So if you have a friend that wants to hear one of them, they could go to your thing and just follow that playlist and listen That's to true. it. Just for we could probably put the link for a couple in the comments. Maybe in the comments, okay, yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Or they okay, so Heart of Worship, that third one. Yeah, let's that touch on it. What do you get? What? Heart of oh, Worship, third one? That was it. Yeah. That was it. So that was it, like set up a Spotify playlist or YouTube playlist and, um, or just like get a playlist on iTunes and just, whatever, just yeah. play it. Like, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I want to encourage every single person to just find a couple worship songs that just connect with your heart. Um, and just listen to a song a day and just worship God, praise God through that. Yeah. Yeah. Go for that. Rain or shine. Do That's it. right. Yeah. yeah. Love it. That's good stuff. Okay. So um that was all of our questions so let's move on to movies books and stuff what do we got oh there it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very we have a very high budget for our props yeah. <laughs> so i just want to let everyone know a lot of thought went into these things uh, as as our transition say it again debron i think we both have a book yeah, go for it. You go first. Okay, so my book is not a new book, and it's one that I've read before. So John first recommended this book to me, actually, and um, I just kind of like picked through it. And anyway, now it's turned into like a like a book that I just a go to. You know what I mean? The kind that you just pull out and re-reference. So it's Soul Keeping by John Orberg, and oh, I'm gonna yeah. just show you because I use it on Kindle. Um, and it's awesome. It's so good. And so the chapters are like all separated on going through different aspects of like caring for your soul, you know, so it talks about rest and worship and like all the things. And um, so it's just, I don't know, it is like filled with just these little nuggets that you, you read it and you literally just have to stop reading and like sit there and just pray and think about this, you know, this little one liner that yeah. they'll drop. 
So anyway, I highly recommend it. I love it. It's great. Great. And my book of the week is uh, Both And by Rich Nathan. Um, here's why I, I just picked this up a couple of days ago and I've been peace looking through it. And one of the reasons why I love it is because this season is so heated in so many ways. And the subtitle is Living, for, Living the Christ-Centered Life in an Either-Or World. And one of the things that you've noticed is that so much, we're, everything's so polarized right now and um, just everything. And so what if we could be both and people in an either or world? And um, so th there's something really, and it really talks about what is the Vineyard Movement. Um, it's a great uh, kind of follow up from a book that was called Empowered Evangelicals. Um, and so this is kind of like the second edition of that, even though different authors, but it's, it's just been really good. Um, they go through, they talk about both in Christianity um, and they go through kind of how it's unity and diversity and mercy and justice and proclamation and demonstration um, already and not yet of the kingdom. And so it's just, what's our, our calling relevant practice, orthodox doctrine. And so it's just a really good um, book for this season in the world where everything seems to be flying apart. And Rich Nathan, is that the Rich Nathan from Columbus, Ohio? Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Oh, cool. Kind of one of the vineyard mothership type places, in big, big church in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, that sounds like a great book too. Yeah. John Harper is amazing. Yeah. We, we, we did a, a, a teaching on him a while ago. Um, it all goes back in the box. When you die, yeah. what was, name that? was that the name of the book? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. At the end, yeah, or it's all said like and done, it goes all it goes back in the box. Yeah, yeah, good. he's a great author too. Yeah. All right. So, how about upcoming things? What does the next 30, 60 days look like for the church? Okay, so we do have an event coming up in November that we just put out and just kind of announced it. So I wanted to touch on this. It's called Gather. The event page is on our Facebook, so you can go click over there. Um, and get more info and let us know if you're interested or if you would like to attend. So what this is, this is a one day seminar, November 14th um, at 10 a.m. And this seminar is geared for college age, college age uh, individuals. So really the idea of this event is to uh, create conversation. We're gonna have speakers um, to look at the social, psychological and biblical aspects of connection and community and just gathering. And it, I think the timing of this is ideal, right? Like this year has been all about the opposite of gathering. And so I, I'm really excited to hear about this event and, and see what, um, how it's used in our community. Yeah, is that gathering gonna be online or is it gonna be actually on campus? It's on campus. So okay, yeah, so cool. we're pushed back in November. And so we're excited to be able to to be able to meet that'll be great and rick i have one thing we didn't talk about this before but i want to bring it up because okay. this sunday i'm going to start a brand new series we just finished this one in the psalms right so yeah. we're starting this new series and it's going to be amazing we're going to tackle <laughs> faith and politics and jesus and so the name of the sermon series is jesus for president and so we're going to tackle this for the next four weeks. And um, it's going to be a series that's going to be filled with uh, this radical Jesus that says, <laughs> my kingdom's not out of this world. And right. so I've already, I told people on Sunday, I'm like, I might offend most of you in the series. <laughs> Great. Um, but, but we're going to have fun. And we're going to actually look at what Jesus said about his kingdom and how we're called to be loyal to God uh, versus having loyalty to anything else in this world. And so it's going to be a great series. It will push people to think about how their faith is lived out in, the, in this world and how do we engage with politics. And, and so anyway, it's going to be a great series. I want to encourage you guys to come out Sunday morning, nine o'clock for our service out in the parking lot. And uh, actually, pretty soon we'll be going back to nine and eleven indoors. That's not too far down the road. Great. John, will you yeah. be telling us how to vote? No, I will not be telling you how to vote. <laughs> Everyone's thinking it. Come on. Oh, I know, I know. Um, 
and, and really, I don't want to give away my whole no, don't, main don't. point on Sunday, but, but, but I really think that the church has, you could say, has given up our birthright, just like um, uh, Esau gave up his birthright. We've given up our birthright. Um, like, like he gave it up for a bowl of lentil soup, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes we give up our birthright to, um, to politics. And so we don't engage uh, with the world because I really think, uh, Rick and DeBron, that the hope of the world is the local church. And, and if we have hope in God's kingdom breaking in, the local church can change the world. And sometimes we've given up our hope to politics and we're thinking as soon as we can get the right person in office, they'll fix the world and the kingdom will be ushered in. And I've come to this point where I've said, okay, it's about the kingdom breaking in and God can fix the world. So mm -hmm. that's what we're going to be talking about. Um, we're going to go deep though. It's a deep dive over the next month. Um, and it'll be, it'll be good for our souls. Yeah. We got some loves on that little hearts in. Oh, good. Live, so. You're not yeah, going to offend yeah. everyone, apparently. Because all the hearts. <laughs> <laughs> I'll need it. <laughs> all right. So we are, are out of time, but I'd, I'd like to maybe close in prayer. And then I just want to hit a couple more um, announcement stuff, and then we'll, we'll finish up. So um, you want to pray is out, John? Sure. I would love to. Okay. So, Lord, I just thank you for every single person that uh, – is seeing this live or or a little bit later we play your blessing and goodness over their life and i just we just say thanks god for um giving us these 150 psalms to really engage with you and learn how to pray and learn how to connect with you in a real authentic way um thanks for um the psalms and thanks for this last series and lord we look forward to seeing your inbreaking rule and reign in our lives in a deeper way um, as we engage with what you're doing uh, in this world. And so, Lord, I just pray your peace over our lives. Let us experience the nearness of your spirit just in the little things. Help us be aware that your spirit is with us in all that we do. Uh, help us be more attuned to um, life in you, Jesus. So, Lord, we love you and bless you. Uh, thanks for this time. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, so to clean, to finish up, we're going to add in, I've got a Spotify playlist I can add in there. Then, DeBron, if you have a few, um, we'll, we'll put them into the notes. We'll give you some links to the books. John Ortberg, I forget the name of it. Uh, we'll soul, link it in there. Uh, soul Keeping, I think. Soul Keeping, and then uh, both, and. Within both and yeah. as well. So we'll add those in yeah. there. Um, and of course, if you guys have any questions, uh, maybe you shared this to one of your friends and your friend has a question. Feel free just to comment right on there and we'll be checking it throughout the week and we'd, be, we'd love to interact with you, uh, pray for you, answer any of your questions. So uh, absolutely don't hold back. Feel free to let us know and we'll take care of it. So um, that's all we got. We're a little over time, but uh, we will see you next Wednesday. We're looking forward to John's sermon on Sunday at nine. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock uh, Pacific uh, time. And because uh, I'm in Orlando, so it's like one for me or 12, but mm -hmm. nine o'clock. And then you'll play it again online at 11, right? Yes, in case anyone right. can't make it to that. Okay, great. Yep. Awesome. Peace in the Middle East. Bye, <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs> Bye.